That is the biggest lie in America. They waste money. To save, Chavis asked the students to do things like keeping the grounds picked up and setting up for lunch. We don't have full-time janitor. Um, we don't have security guards. We don't have computers. We don't have a cafeteria staff. Thanks, Dom. Man. There's no pool or world-class gym. Okay, on your mark, get set, go. For gym class, his students often just run laps around the block. If you come to school, you're going to have the advantage over everyone else. When you it means there's more money left over for teaching. Is that a complete sentence or a fragment? Even spending less money per student, Chavis pays his teachers more than public school teachers get. His school also thrives because the principal gets involved. Chavis shows up at every classroom and uses gimmicks like small cash payments for perfect attendance. Do you come to school for the money or do you come to school to get an education? And the money. Since he took over four years ago, this school has gone from being among the worst in Oakland to being the best. His middle school has the highest test scores in the city. You boosted the scores from where they were by spending less money. It's not about the money. But what about kids who come from broken families, poor families? Give me the poor kids and I will outperform the wealthy kids who live in the hills. And we do it. PR. Other spunky independent schools do well with less money. Like this one in South Carolina run by Teresa Middleton. We saw that the kids here were enthusiastic about learning. My children are so excited. Can we play this today? Can we do pop? Can we do relay math? Can we play bingo? Can we play phonics around the world? <laughs> Learning should be fun. And fun seems to teach. These first graders can read. Get ready to work, work, work. I've had three-year-olds sounding out words. My below average child can go to public school and make the honor roll. Yet she spends only $3,000 per child versus the $9,000 South Carolina's public schools spend and still fail to educate students like Dorian Kane. My son is now 18 and he is not reading. He's on a fourth grade level and it's a huge problem. Do you want to take a shot at that? Dorian struggles to read just one sentence in this first grade book. One day Uncle Jack came to visit. He says he wants to learn to read. You know, there is a whole world that can open up to you if you are able to read. Yeah, I know that. Did they try to teach you to read? From time to time. The test was helped. So Gene has been after Dorian's schools yeah. for help for years. You have to beg. You know, whatever you ask for, you, you're begging because they have the power. Now, they've had meetings with you to talk about your son. Yes. Here is one of them. Good morning, I'm Fred Stevens, Director of Programs for Exceptional Children. This is where uh, some of the money goes to educational specialists, the Director of Programs for Exceptional Children, the school principal, a resource teacher, a gym teacher, the school counselor, and the district's special ed coordinator. But they hadn't done much for the boy who can't read. Mr. have you had the opportunity to counsel with Dorian? Well, first of all, I really hadn't had the opportunity to really counsel with him. I'll be frank with you. The principal said Dorian was doing well. And I've seen great progress in him, so I don't have any concerns. The meeting went on for 45 tedious minutes. Dorian looked defeated. His mother just kept raising the one issue that concerned her most. The only issue I have is his reading level, and that's what's important to me. All right, come on in and have a seat. So we decided we'd send Dorian to a private learning center, Sylvan. Could they teach Dorian to read when the South Carolina public schools hadn't? All right, click on OK for me. You bet. After just 72 hours of instruction using computers and workbooks, Dorian's reading was up more than two grade levels. His mother loves the private program. They are doing what they're supposed to do. They are on point, but I can't say the same for the public schools. No, she can't. South Carolina, over 12 years, spent nearly $100,000 on Dorian's education, but they left him behind. When we continue, what if schools had to get good results? or flunk out of business. So the fact that some schools fail and close, that's, that's the success? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's next. If you're a parent with money, you have choices. You can pay for a private school or buy into a neighborhood that has a better public school. A real estate agency even runs commercials about it. Anyone know the student per teacher ratio in your classroom? 
They show a mother to be desperate to find a good school. She's crazy. No, she's not. In San Jose, California, parents want to get their kids into Fremont Union schools. They're so much better than neighboring schools that parents sometimes cheat to get their kids in. What's cheating? Pretending to live in the district when you don't. Inspector John Lozano goes door to door to check if kids really live where they say they live. Is uh, here? Yeah. Really? Oh, great. Nice to finally meet you. How long have you guys been here? Then Lozano says he still needs to look okay. inside the house you know to make sure she really lives there. I don't mean to embarrass you. So. He sounds nice, but think about what he's doing. The school district police go into your daughter's bedroom. He even goes through drawers and closets if he has to. Well, we have a computer, we have some Seventeen magazines, we have pictures of the student and her friends on the wall. This girl passes. I was looking for But the grandmother who listed this address is caught. People who answer the door say she doesn't live here. She says that she lives here and that her grandson's going to live here with her. That's so they can go to school at Homestead High School. Oh, I have two. Yeah. yeah. Caught. She's definitely caught. And two days later, I talked to the grandmother. I was actually crying. It's kind of creepy that they force you to go to the black market to get your kid a better education. I was crying in front of these 14 years old. Why can't they just let parents get in the school of their choice? Why can't they? Changing schools can change a child's life. Patty Bauer's kids were stuck in a public yeah. school that wasn't teaching them. But then they got McKay scholarships, which let them attend this private school that works with kids who have special needs. They would invite. Joey has been brought up four grade levels in reading. Alan's gone from C's and D's to be an honor roll student. But last week, a Florida court killed a similar choice program. And Patty fears her kids will soon be forced back into public school. If they take the McKay scholarship away, I don't think, I'm sorry, I don't think Joey will finish school. Why can't she choose her child's school? Most countries that beat America on international tests give parents that choice. There were a few people who got very, very high scores. Here in Belgium, the government spends less than American schools do on each student, but the money's attached to the kids, so they can go wherever they want, to a state-run school, or a Catholic school, or a Muslim, or a Montessori school. Because of that choice, it makes it a lot harder for schools because there's a lot of pressure. Kate Van den Sabel runs a state school in Belgium. She says because the money is attached to the kids, she has to please the parents, and that makes a world of difference. If we don't offer them what they want for their child, they won't come to our school. So she provides extras like cooking, more sports programs, furniture building, electronics. Is this what you like best? Yeah. You uh, think that kind of. America doesn't leave any child behind, but um, I think that we don't leave any child behind and that you guys have some kind of a problem with that. I wouldn't send my child to an American public school, not even for a million dollars. Her son lives in Belgium now, but when he was six, his family lived in America and his mom was upset when he was assigned to a school. In America, I sort of had to beg, for, please, please uh, give me a good school for my child. And here in Belgium, uh, they're all over the place. Because if they're not good, they're gone. You shut down bad schools. That's healthy. Because it says to people that, that, that incompetence won't work. So the fact that some schools fail and close, that's, that's the success That's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a real good what thing. What happens to those kids in those schools? Then they'll go to another school. Why should we keep them in a school that's not working? That's what we've been doing for decades. Giving kids a choice forces schools to try harder. You have to be innovative all the time. You have to look for new means of working, new means of thinking. Onions, ham, and salami. So if we don't succeed, we just run out of business. I think it's a pity that American children don't have the same opportunities and, and same uh, choices as we have, but um, if you're used to it, maybe it's just normal. No choice is just normal in America. When 2020 returns, kids are learning in school. The question is, what? They were giving him the answer? He said they're teaching me to cheat. Next. 
Stupid in America continues with John Stossel. Why are you watching us? You don't have to.